Welcome back to another episode of Curious Mike. I'm here with my guy AG, aka one time champion, aka Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so I want to start off like in the hoop space uh, and then we'll kind of transition to off the court stuff. But uh, you came to Denver, I want to say two, three years ago, probably three years ago now. Yeah. Um, you came from Orlando. It's you know, gone quick. Yeah, it really has. What was the difference to you from, you know, hooping in Orlando? We've talked about it a little bit, but like now playing in Denver, playing for a winning team, competing for a championship and all that. Man, it, it was felt, it felt like. Well, the spacing on the floor was way different. Mm -hmm. Like being able to play uh, between you, Jamal, and Joker, and Joker. Yeah, it was like people have forgot about me. You know <laughs> what I mean? Which is cool. Yeah. So like, I'm just getting in where I fit in. I'm getting easy layups. Yeah. Everything that I got in Orlando, it was like, yo, that was tough. That's, that's a tough bucket. Tough bucket. Like everyone was like, damn, that's a tough bucket. Hey, that's a tough bucket. And that was tough. That was tough. Yeah. When I came to uh, Denver, it was like, okay, that's an easy, easy two little back cut. I felt like playing in between y'all three, we can't lose, bro. Yeah. That's what it felt like. You over there, you were like, um, you were the man, you know, the go-to score. That's why everything was so tough. You know, teams, you know, game planning for you and you're like the man. Um, and over here, you're obviously a big part of what we go, got going on, but you got you got so many good players on our team. So, you know, when they're worried about you, I'm getting an open three. When they're worried about me or KCP in the corners, you're getting a dunk. Um, was it hard to transition from being the man over there to kind of like filling a role over here or no? Nah, not at, not at first. Not at first. Um, just because, I, I mean... I get to play my role. Yeah. You know, I get to play the dunker. I get run outs, I, uh, cuts, lobs. I get to, you know, shoot like spot ups. You know, like I can like fill in the gaps. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is perfect for me. That's how I like to play. We move the ball here. The open man is the right man. And then, like, y'all are so talented. Y'all are so skilled. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, I'm. I'm not even worried, like, what shots you guys take. You Don't know? say y'all. You, 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 you got it, too. But it's true, though, bro. Y'all are, like, it's, it's different. It was, it was just, like, a different level of talent Yeah. coming from Orlando to Denver. It just, it just was. The culture was already there. Uh, the skills that you guys had, the talent, it was just different, bro. Yeah. Talk about a little bit about, like, the mentality and the, and the difference between being on a winning team versus not. Because, you know, we all grew up, everyone in the league grew up being a man, and they probably won tons and tons of games. But you get to the NBA, and depending on where you get drafted, you might be uh, on one of those teams that really doesn't win, like, a whole lot of games. And I feel like a lot of players kind of develop the mentality of, like, man, this is just what it is. I'm chilling. Like, my team's not probably going to make the playoffs. We're definitely not winning a championship. I'm going to just show up to work and, and kind of leave. And we've talked about that before, how – Man, y'all weren't even really tripping. Y'all would just show up to work and then hop in your whips in the in the eighty degree weather in Orlando. Um, that's real, bro. That's crazy. That's to me. real. Uh, uh, Charles Barkley. He was talking to my dad, and he was like, "You know, if you're gonna lose, Orlando's not a bad place to lose in." Facts. <laughs> it's eighty degree weather, so people were coming in, kind of just like showing up, doing their job. Hopping back in there like drop top or whatever, you know what I mean? Going back home and enjoying the city. Orlando's a great city when it comes down to it. Fire. Like, yeah, you got the crib out there. Yeah, it's an underrated city. But um, just like the culture, was, it just it wasn't a winning culture. Like, I think they're getting it together now. You know, they're starting to get it together. They're a good team now. Yeah. But when I was uh, in Orlando, shoot, it was I had six different coaches. Or, and how many or, years? Every, every five, year? Yeah, I had five different coaches in six years and, and four different GMs. And and so there was no stability. It was like you were a rookie every year. You were having to, like, try and prove yourself. Different and, plays, different strategies. Yeah, yeah, that's tough. It was tough, bro. It was tough. And and try and, like, lead the organization in the right direction. And it was it was difficult, bro. Yeah, that's, that's crazy to think about. Yeah, so now you in Denver, and we, you know, just came off of a, a chip. Um, what was your favorite, you know, moments did you, in the playoffs? Did you always kind of feel like, man, like, we are for sure winning a championship? Or kind of what was your, like, mentality in the playoffs? For me, it felt like 
except for that Sun series when they tied it up 2-2, mm. I was kind of like, man, like, nobody's touching us right now. Like, that's how it felt for yeah. the most part. Minnesota's a good team, and they're balling this year. Yeah. But that series, you know, they got one game. Um, I kind of felt like we always were in control a little bit, but what was your favorite moments from the playoffs in that championship run? Man, my favorite moments. I always have to say that was a great run, man. We were real dominant. Yeah. We lost four games. Uh, one Minnesota, two Suns, one and Miami, one yeah. Miami, so. And really, like, could have could have won all those games. We really, yeah, thanks. Book and uh, KD, like, domi- they were they dominant were in those two games that they won. Minnesota, that game that they won, they, it went into overtime. That was one of my favorite mo- moments of uh, <clears throat> of the playoffs. That Minnesota, the, the game that we lost in, well, we were down like like 12 or something like that. With like a minute and a half, a two minute. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Tied it up. That was crazy. I was like, oh, okay, we're serious. Like, we got no quitting us. Like, we could really do this. That was a – and then, like, you know, obviously just winning it, bro. Like, the champagne showers is so sick. We was in the locker room. Yeah, people don't know. We, we were in the locker room for hours on hours. Yeah. Like, after we, won the, after we won the tip, you know. The celebrations on the court. Then you move it to the locker room, and we were in there just going crazy for hours. Then we went over to the <laughs> to the warehouse, had it popping in there. We did. But um, people don't. Even, it, it was weird because I don't know if you thought it was weird. Like that night we won the championship, it was so lit. And then the next day we we had nothing to do. And then the mm. day after that there was nothing. And then the parade was like the day after. It was so. It was kind of weird. What was your favorite? Um, just during the whole celebration. Um, what was your favorite part about that? Was it the parade? Was it right after? What was it? Man, it, it, the locker room was cracking. Cracking. It was crazy. It was like <laughs> it was a club almost, in there. It was, bro. It was like a club in the locker room. It was just drenched, like soaked in champagne, like the alcohol. Would, like yeah. It was like Loki burning my nostrils. Like it was yeah. so like. In the air, bro. It, it was, was so thick. Like the cigar smoke was so thick. And then I was lit. I was lit on the way uh, back to the like my place, yeah. so I jumped out of the car, and I, I, I forgot the, about that. I was bro. through the streets, yeah, and like people were double taking. They were like, "Oh shit, that's that's a yo, that's AG, really." <laughs> so it, it went from like ten people to like thirty people to like seventy people. And we were in the streets, and I'm like bodying people, like trying to get yeah. through. Like yeah. a little kid walked up, and I bodied him. It was, it was all bad, bro. You were You were dolo? You were buying Yeah, some? I had, like, a couple of my homies, but they're, like, they're not, like, built like we are, yeah. you know what I mean? So they're getting, like, kind of, like, moved around in the crowd. Like, I'm moving. I, for real, like, I kicked the little kid over. <laughs> he, I know I felt bad. He looked up at me. His eyes were, like, tearing up. Yo, because you was really in the streets. <laughs> like, you yeah. were out there. Like. I was, like, I picked him up. I was, like, where are your parents? And then, like, kept it moving, you know what I mean? Like, it was, it was nuts. It got hectic, like. Right as it was about to get like overwhelming, where it got to like 115 people, yeah. like just like mob in the street, yeah, like fireworks going off and stuff. A media team like picked me up, and I like jumped in the car and like came to the lounge. And, oh, for real? Yeah, man, bro. When I saw those videos, I was weak because like only you would do that. <laughs> only you, out of all people, would just be in the in the street celebrating with the fans. I know, obviously, they really appreciate it. AG is a man of the people. For those of you that don't know, like that's just your personality. So that was dope, but. I saw the videos, like people doing like pull ups on the on the light post. That's <laughs> cracking. Man, it was crazy. Like that definitely was one of those memories. Um it's crazy because like the celebration lasted, you get to the parade and now since then it's been can they repeat? Like that's mm. the topic so quick. Yeah. You know, after we just did something so big. Um, but I feel like even though we lost some key pieces, Bruce, Jeff, we still got a squad, you know, these yeah. young guys are we got a lot of young guys who can hoop. Um, kind of what do you think about our culture, about our team, makes our team special? I mean, you guys have been with Mike Malone pretty much the whole time. Mm -hmm. So you know how he is. So you guys have an understanding of, like, what he's looking for, like, how how he's going to react, like, what's going to trigger him, what's going to set him off, you know, what's going to keep him cool. And then it got to come down to big fella. Yeah, like yo, like yo, he's a great leader. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like when it comes down to it, like he's there on time every every day. He's on time, if not early. Um, He works out in the morning. He gets his reps in. He goes to the game, does what he does in the game, and then after the game, he lifts weights. Yeah, you know. So like he like works 
religiously every single day. And he's humble. He shares the ball. So when you have a two-time MVP and a one-time finals MVP that's so selfless, everybody else got to, I mean, like, what what else can you ask for? Yeah. Everybody else got to be selfless, too. Like, if, if he can do it, everybody can be selfless. So I think, like, big fella, is, he's a beast, bro. Man, unbelievable. Like, I saw some the other day about like the tears of the best NBA players and they had like Joker in a tear of his own. I think that's the first time people have really put respect on him. Like mm. that dude is unique. You know what I mean? He he may not look the part, but you watch him play night in, night out. That dude is the best basketball player I have ever seen in my life. Like <laughs> from, from the, from the really passing dark. to the, it's so For crazy. It's, it's crazy what he can do. And <clears throat> I think like early on in my uh, career with the Nuggets, he really wasn't that into it. Like he was good, but he wasn't like he didn't care that much. Mm. But he has grown every single year. Like even after his MVP year, how do you get better after an MVP year? And he mm. did it. Then he was back to back MVP. And how now is how is he better this year? After we just won a championship, he's better. You go back to Serbia, and I just talked to him today. He was like, "Man, brother, I was drinking six beers a day. You know, he probably didn't touch a basketball. Like, how do you get better from last year to this? Year? And it's just." It's crazy, but talking about Joker, you and him, y'all mesh like really well. Like as good mm. a chemistry as me and Joker have, as good a chemistry as him and Jamal have. Um, you and his chemistry, you know, around the rim, you know, the lobs, when he's catching the pocket, throwing you the lobs, you complement each other probably as good as any two players in the league. Uh, what, how do you think you guys developed that? And is it just like your, your games or did it happen over time? Are you guys having conversations? I know y'all sit right next to each other in the locker room, so. I, I just like to play the right way, and yeah. I think he likes to play the right way too. So that's like a um, like a mutual understanding, you know what I mean? Right off the rip, like, okay, if you're open, I'm going to hit you. You know, if you make this cut, I'll find you. You know, if you don't shoot this, you, you be patient, the ball will come back around to you. Stay open, keep your hands ready. And mm -hmm. I, I think that, that um, I think that helped. Like, I used to play point mm -hmm. when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. he, he's like basically a point center. Yeah. So, you know, you got like your, your front court kind of think like a back court. Yeah, you know? facts, so, that's true. So we're kind of like on the same page, like on the same wave when it comes to that. Yeah. And that, that helps out a lot. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, one thing about you is you, uh, you stay off of Instagram for the most part. You know, me and you, me and you both kind of do that in spurts. Um, you get on, you get off. What's your reasoning for that? And then my, my follow-up question is, how do you deal with the criticism versus the praise? Like, there's so much now that, that we uh, have to deal with in the NBA now, even more than, than guys in the past had to deal with. Like, if I go through my DMs right now, half of them are people that, that, that do the sports betting. That parlay, huh? And it's like, it's either, bro, you just, you just uh, made me so much money. Thank you. You're my yeah. favorite player now, da 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 Or it's, Go kill yourself. I hope you tear an ACL. Real. I hope you never. It, like it's the craziest. Real, yeah. On both sides of the. Uh, <clears throat> on he, both sides of the not scale. Joking. Not that's not. And it's literally like, bro. An over exaggeration. I hope, you, I hope you tear your ACL. I hope you I never hope you die. It's the craziest for stuff. Real. Like I'm looking at my DMs. I'm like, yo. It's so for a lot of people, that can make you kind of like want to stay out the spotlight, kind of get mm. off of the gram. Like, what, what's your reasoning for that? And then how do you deal with? People like that because I, I really think the sports betting stuff is, is is a bad place our game is going because these people really be mad, bro. Like you, if you you may have a great game, twenty five and ten, but they had you getting, you know, twenty five and eleven or something, and now yeah. they're 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 really hot. Like they really lost some money because you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So how do you deal with all that? Man, that's. That's big, man. That's really big. It's a part of it now. It's a part of today's game. Like somebody yeah. was like, "Yo, I lost, I lost my apartment on you <laughs> today." <laughs> I, was, I, I was, or after the Knicks game, I like, I played really bad. Yeah, I, I seen that, and I was like, "Ain't nobody tell you to bet your apartment <laughs> on me in the first place." So it don't phase you, dummy. Why you putting where you live up on, on uh, a basketball game? Yeah. Nah. Figure out first off. Figure out a better hustle than that. Yeah. I think of it like um, like the trolls, uh, like you said, like the criticism and like the praise. Yeah, yeah, how do you balance it out, and how do you, is that why you stay off of social media? I think a lot? of it like I think of it like salt and sugar. <clears throat> Too much of either will kill you. Yeah, you know what I mean. 
So people will tell you, you're the best, you're the best, you're the best, you're the best, you're the best. You're going to get soft, you yeah. know, if you if you buy into that. If people say, you're the worst, you're the worst, you're the worst, you're the worst, you're going to get, like, cynical or you're going to get, um, like, discouraged. Yeah. That's kind of why I stay off of Instagram. Yeah. Just because, you know, Instagram allows um, people that don't know you, don't care about you, really idolize you. Yeah. It gives them access to you to say whatever they'd like to say to you. Right. And, you know, you go through that and you read it. You know, I, I, uh, I don't know, bro. I, I'm, I'm not really rocking with IG like that. Yeah. But um, it's good for, like, uh, you know, it's good for, like, marketing. You know, my it agency wants, wants me to be on there. But it's, like, really distracting. It's, I see things that aren't for me. It's you, distracting you know? and it's, like people think because you're making all this money and you 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 live a good life and you live in a nice place that, that certain things don't affect you but everybody is human and when mm. people you know it could be a nobody when they're when they're praising you you know you you appreciate that if someone on the street good game mike like i appreciate that but mm. also on the flip side when people even if they have nothing to do with your life if you're reading enough of the negative stuff it affects you bro we're all human so i, I totally agree with you um, plus, like the trolls on the same time, the same side, like the same person, like the internet gangster, like they're just gonna like say something like, "Man, you suck!" Like you're the worst yeah. basketball player ever. Yeah. Over the keyboard, if they see you in person, they're gonna be like, "Oh my God, Michael Porter, Man. please, can I get an autograph?" You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, so it's, just, it's like it's a little phony, bro. It's, there's a facade. There's a facade to social media. Big facade, and it's crazy because yeah. that's such a big part of the world we live in now. But mm. speaking of social media, um, one of your last posts was, you know, you on your birthday, um, you was in a helicopter, uh, man, in some in some place. But off of the court, people don't know how <laughs> how how dope of a dude you are. But you're 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 one of a kind. You know, out of all the guys on our teams, you're one of those dudes who really lives life to the fullest. You know, I appreciate that, Mike. In the off season, you traveling, mm. you know, you're riding your motorcycle around town. You got the warehouses that is some of the dopest spots I ever seen. But like, who are you as a person off the off the court um, mm. that people probably don't know about? Like, what's some of your hobbies? Man, the motorcycle. Yeah, I love riding bikes. Be on there. That's fun. Um, you know, I, I don't do it too much during the winter time. I'll ride a little bit during the summertime. Um, I mean, I, I just, I want to experience what life has to offer. Yeah. You know, and, um, and, and be grateful doing it and like, you know, just experience. I guess that's what it comes down to. I love to travel, like you said, go to see different cultures, eat different foods. Yeah. Uh, go turn up at different spots around the world. And you sometimes go like solo. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go dolo or meet somebody out there. Yeah. You know, um. Like I, I just spent, uh, I spent like maybe six weeks in Spain uh, this past summer. I just got like a little house out there. It was working out and just immersing myself in the culture. Um, I don't know, man. I'm, I just like to have fun. You know, That's dope. I, I like to have fun. You, um, where were you in that in that picture with the helicopter? And how did that, how did that even? Because some people seen that, and I'm like, man, how does how does how did he even arrange that? Where were you? And how, what was what was that all about? I'm gonna give you the play, bro. Give you the whole play. You go to Geneva, right? Yeah. Go get you a couple watches in Geneva. In Geneva, it's clean. <laughs> <laughs> I picked up uh, a couple paddocks um, and a rolly. They real or they fake? Nah, they are real. Oh, they're okay, real. okay, nah, okay. China, China boys. Um, <laughs> China boys be having a fake. China one? boys be a little, a little suspect. But um, yeah, you go to Geneva, and then um, there's a hotel. Uh, in a place called Vows. I forget exactly what the hotel is called, um, but they'll send you a helicopter to Geneva, pick you up in Geneva, fly you to like basically the Swiss Alps. Um, and then it's a hotel that's tucked in the Swiss Alps. Just spent, uh, spent my birthday there because um, I had been working. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to go to like a, like a spa basically. Yeah, and relax. Uh, yeah, and just relax. So we kicked it and then we took the helicopter when we uh, when we landed in Vows, there was a black car waiting for us. It was clean, like the helicopter just landed yeah. on the pad, hopped in the black car, and then later that day or the next day, actually, we um, we hopped back in the helicopter and we went up to the Alps and had like a little picnic on the Swiss Alps. You and who? <laughs> <laughs> 
me and uh, hey, your hey, me and uh, the Jane to my Tarzan. <laughs> okay, that's tough. Is she still the Jane to your Tarzan? Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, for sure. that's lit, man. So now that you've been around the world and you've seen so much, <laughs> experienced so much. What do you what do you want to do after hoop? I mean, this isn't gonna last forever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you made a ton of money hooping. We've won a championship. You know, you've accomplished a lot in your career, and we got a lot more to accomplish. But it's not gonna last forever. So, mm-hmm. after this, what you think you want to do? I feel like you probably will just be one of them dudes that's just gonna be chilling, traveling, enjoying life. But correct me if I'm wrong. What do you what do you want to do? Uh, well, I still wanted to. I need between now and the time I retire, I want to continue to uh, acquire skills, you know, for off the court, um, whether it be learn a different language or learn how to code or finance or law, you know, so learn different languages that can open doors and pathways um, in, in different uh, respected careers. Um, yeah, I mean, the traveling and the chilling, I feel like it's going to get boring. You think so? After like maybe like two years, three years. Yeah. You know, we're competitive. We got we like we like stuff. We like to like uh like go get it. You know yeah. what I mean? We like to hustle. You know, that's why we've gotten to the place that we're at. Because we yeah. like to hustle. So I feel like that hustle like is gonna trigger. So um, you know, right now, uh my brother and my sister, um, they've created a sports agency and a media a media agency, um, a conglomerate. And uh, they're started. It's a startup, so um, they're starting to build that out. Um, hopefully, by the time I retire, you know, there will be a place for me in that company. Yeah. And I, I can do like uh, sports and entertainment, um, marketing and media conglomerate. Um, I think that's a way to stay around the game. Yeah. You know, help up and up and coming kids that may not have the right representation or might might not have the right people around them. And then put the right people around them so that they can succeed and that they can, in turn, make buku bread in the NBA and give back to their family and pay it forward. So, good way to stay one, or stay around the game and, and and help kids coming up. Hundred percent. That's what I'm thinking. That's dope. Yeah, I want to I want to talk to your brother more about that uh, agency. In five, now I'm gonna say in ten years, because for people that don't know AG, he's a young player. You know what I'm saying? He kind of he got the juice. He be He's the dude, you know, around no, Denver, but no, everywhere, you. you know, he's the dude. Everywhere we go, that's this you. is the dude, it's you know, PJ. the females love him, all that. In 10 years, do you see yourself settle down with a with a girl? Do you, uh, what's your views on, on marriage? Do you think you'll ever settle down or not? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to settle down. I'll definitely settle down. In 10 years, you it's think you'll be married? Uh, yeah, in 10 years. I think I'll be married in five years. You the type if you meet a girl and you really clicking with her, like you probably wouldn't take you long to be like, nah, I just want to marry this yeah, girl. Yeah, I lock in. I mean, I've been in the NBA since I was eighteen. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I grew up in this. I've seen the ins and outs. I've done this, that, the third. Yeah, you know, all of that is, is exhausting. Yeah, you, know you went I mean? a different being page. In the streets, being in the streets is exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> being outside, it's tired. I'm not sure. I'm not saying marriage isn't tiring and exhausting in its own right. You know, it is work. But if you find the right woman, it can be completely empowering. And, yeah. You know, what's a king without a queen? <laughs> it's real. Dude, it's real. Dude got some knowledge on him, don't he? <laughs> so, like, what would it take for you to settle down with a girl? Like, what is your ideal type of a woman? Mm. Mm. Very like caring, mm-hmm. very nice, uh, very intelligent, um, very real, uh, down to earth, um, good head on their shoulder, good family background, um, beautiful, um, and would uh, make a good mother. You know, the facts. I think that's what it comes down to. It's crazy because most of the dudes in the league, like, it get hard because most of the dudes that are married kind of in our profession, they they kind of met their their girl in high school and it was their childhood sweetheart who they who they got married to. Guys in our position, um, it's hard like once you have what you have and you are who you are to meet a 
to meet a female who you can like trust and who you man check this out but look he be going overseas and he told me you got to go find one overseas yeah yeah they, they were they no football over there you know what i mean they know soccer player they don't really know basketball players yeah. like that like, check this out i went on a date with this girl one time i forget where we were going where was it at might have been in like chicago or something like that we went on a date I got to the got to the spot, right? We were just sitting at the bar, waiting for our table, getting drinks, whatever. She opened up her phone. The last thing she had on her phone was Aaron Gordon's net worth. You know what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? You feel me? That's I was sick. like, yo, this is wild, yo. And females are wild. smart these days because they can put off an image to where like they don't care about that. They're not in it for the bread. They just are have your best interest at heart, but Man, deep down somewhere, like if you was just a regular dude, who knows if she'd be messing with you. So how do you think you can Hell tell? No, Mike, I'm trying to tell you this right now. Just like you said, like when you get to this level, there's certain girls that mess with you just for, you know, like the clout, yeah. the money, that thing, the security. Um, but no, there are real ones. You know, there's real ones out there. I'm I, going I'd like overseas. to believe shit. I'm traveling with you. <laughs> this upcoming summer, we going overseas. Come on. We going to find us some twins. <laughs> um, you I, get, are you getting married? I'm going to be married. I th- if I had to predict it, I'd probably get married before you. Hmm. I'd probably be married if I had to guess. And what am I, 25? I'll be married by the time I'm 29. You think so? I'll meet that's a girl. Probably, that's good. I'll good meet age. a girl the next couple years. Good and then... Call it a day. Yeah. And I think so. Because my younger brothers, um, like Jante, my younger brother Jante, he's married. He's 22. Mm. He's 23. He just had his birthday today. Um, and then. Happy birthday. No, I think he's 24 now, right? He's 24. And then my other brother, who's even younger than him, I think he's 22. 20, he's 22, Kobe. He's about to get married. So I'm 25. I'm the older brother. And I'm, you know, I feel like I'm the most immature because they, they found their. That lady. Um, I know, but they don't, they don't got access like you. They do, though. They, they be having jumps. Yeah. yeah but not girls, access girls. like you, though, bro. Nah, probably not access like me, but still, I got I to gotta, I gotta settle down, man. I'm, I'm on the same page as you. You know, this year, we, uh, we kind of locked in a little bit more. We're not, we not mm. going out as much. We're not staying out as late. Um, it's true. I asked you before the podcast what you was doing today, and you said you're going back to the crib, and and getting in some, what was it called, me time, me work? I guess it's just like, um, I don't know, I guess I call it my work. You know, it's called like man's work. That's like the what the OG used to say back in the day, like, oh, I got to do the man's work today. Yeah. But the man's work, it's not man's work. It's, every, it's everybody work. It's like uh, like reading, writing, prayer, meditation, you know what I mean? Like just making sure that you're doing the work, the in, internal work. Yeah. You know, you got to do the in, internal work. That's how you. That's how you went on the outside. Everything. Right. Everything else like comes to fruition when you like take care of the inside. Hundred percent. Yeah, that's something I'm really realizing too. So I'm, I'm paying attention more internally, emotionally, mentally more than I ever have in my mm-hmm. life. Um, everybody needs to do it, but especially the day and age we live in, you know, you gotta you gotta find yourself and find your purpose. So that's my last question for you, bro. Um, what do you feel like? Your purposes on this on this earth, you know, mm. besides being a, a great basketball player, what do you feel like all encompassing is your is your purpose? Why are you here? Man, this is like the pageantry question right here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, it would be it would have to be education, education reform, like the curriculum in America. Mm-hmm. That that's probably what I'll probably concert my efforts to when I'm done done. Like I'll take all my money. Um, try and make like a private school or something like that, like how LeBron did, mm-hmm. what, like with the I Promise, like he set like a great foundation, a, a great blueprint for the rest of us. I'll probably do something like that and create a curriculum where you're teaching kids like to know themselves, mm-hmm. you know, to to know themselves uh, from a young age, to be independent thinkers from a young age, um, law, finances, like all all that, all the things that you need in real life, so you're not just like drifting through life. Yeah, you know. you're making life happen instead of letting life happen to you. Facts, exactly. So just trying to figure out a d- different way for uh, kids to be educated. That's dope, bro. I feel that for sure. And if I can ever, 
Invest in what you got going on. Let me know because that's dope. Oh, I got yeah. some other stuff that I that I. But that's that's a dope vision, and I feel like out of anyone, you you make that crack. You know. Yeah, I'm my uh, my grandpa was a like a superintendent of a school or of a school district um, after he left the military. So you know, it's, it's in the DNA. You know, it's like uh, as a teacher and as an educator. So I don't know, maybe bring that back around. That's dope. What about you? Man, my purpose? I don't know. I ask everybody else's question. And I don't even I don't even know for sure what what mine is. That's why I'm doing some of the journaling stuff. I'm trying to figure it out. Like, man, every day, regardless of a good game or bad game, what can I cling on to is like my purpose. Like what's gonna make me want to wake up in the morning and motivate me besides just being a great basketball player. And you know, I got passions. Um I think it's, man, just being like real and authentic and inspiring people to, I just feel like that's one of my gifts is like, uh, is just being like authentic and like um, not being afraid to speak my mind in certain areas. And I think, I mean, you know me, I'm a, I'm a man of faith, you know, I believe in God. I feel like through all of our different people's talents, at the end of the day, like our goal, like our, our purpose should be to point people you know, to God and inspire mm. people in that way. So that's my purpose. I just don't know how to really execute it all the way. Like we got all this money, you know what I mean? And it's great. But what can I do with this money to actually make a difference? Like I don't need 10 cars, you know what I mean? I don't yeah. need 10 cribs. It's fun to, for me, it's fun to experience things. It's fun to make sure my family's straight, but what right. can I actually do? That's why, like I always tell you, like, I appreciate how you actually make something happen with your money. You know, you went and did the, uh, Sorry, I'm messing up the mic. You went and did something. You you did the warehouses. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to open up the the lounge. You want to do the school. Like for me, I'm trying to figure out what can I actually do to like make a difference. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you a couple years older than me, but that's kind of what I'm working on. That's why I'm spending time doing the journaling and uh, all that. Because that's why I ask people every every episode. I ask people like, what do you feel like your purpose is? Because I'm trying to. That's what I'm trying to figure out right now. You know what I mean? That's a deep question, man. I think if you ask God, God will give you the answer. Facts. You know. Facts. He's gonna, you know, he's gonna tell you right every time. Ask for that clarity. Ask for the answer to that. He's gonna tell you right. Hundred percent, man. Well, you know, I appreciate you hopping on. I know you don't do the podcast man. too often, but this has been good. It's been insightful. People don't know AG um, off of the court, but this is the man right here. Probably my best friend on the team. Um, my light skinned brother. So it's my twin right here. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate you. Curious Mike out. Yeah.